Andrew, I was curious as to whether you could kind of break down or tussle apart two different sort of forms of ego there. One is, I think, the kind of identity um, or, you know, overarching view of oneself. Uh, Antonio Damasio sort of refers to that as the autobiographical self. And then one is the actual loss of the sense of self, let's say, within a flow state. And I think that they are somewhat distinct from one another. You're right. I, they're they're probably two very separate brain circuits, one for the actual activity that you're expected to do and that you're compensated for, and that the career metrics that are gonna, you're gonna be measured against, you know, are, are, there's your craft, and then there's the way that you're viewed for how well or how poorly you perform that craft. And so I think it really speaks to the key importance of being able, this is the ego, let dismantling the ego or temporary dis temporary dismantling the ego that Brett's referring to, you have to be able to set aside people's perceptions of you and focus on learning your craft, right? Uh, you know, really focusing on the process. You know, a, a good friend of mine, Pat Dossett, talks about you know, crawl, walk, run as the key to essentially all all progress, all craft. You have to think crawl, walk, run. You're, there's and he and I like to talk about sometimes there is no trampoline to the top floor. You have to put that in. And you have to be comfortable doing that. Now that beginner's mind is great to talk about. It's a whole other thing if you're looking at it as you're doing it through the lens of how am I being perceived. And one thing that's been useful for me is to really be explicit about the fact that I don't know certain things at, of course, at every stage. And then you learn and then you know. So my graduate advisor was very sage. She taught me the key importance of being able to say out loud to people, I don't know. Like I would ask her a question about science and she would say, I don't know. And I'm thinking, you're my mentor. You're supposed to know everything. And she's, I don't know. But I, pretty soon I realized she had, she knew a lot of other things and she had an amazing ability to, to find knowledge and, and was a great resource for herself and for others. So I think you have to separate the craft from your perception of how people perceive you. It's actually called theory of mind, Sasha. That Simon Baron Cohen, Sasha Baron Cohen's brother, incidentally, Borat's brother, talked about the theory of mind, which is my perception of how you perceive me. It's a very human, very complex operation. You have to put aside your theory of mind to drop into your craft. And you, the, the irony is that, and the beauty of it really is that people's perception of you is going to be in direct relationship to how well you can set aside their perception of you. Right. This is, mm -hmm. means I have to, I have to think, I don't, I have to set aside what people are thinking and just focus on the crawl, walk, run, the craft. You have to learn your craft. And if your craft focus, there's a brilliance to that I think time gonna, and you improve. Ryan, I want to go back to something Ryan said that was in his question. He was talking a little bit about the difference between the sense of self that we lose and flow when the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex dials down, probably a bunch of other things happening, but this is just Charles Lim's research versus the theory of mind self. Those are totally different circuits, correct? Totally different. And, and if I'm devoting prefrontal or any brain circuitry to people's perception of me, I'm going to be off my game. I'm not performing it nearly as well as I could. It's, it's all about resource allocation. I've talked about this acetylcholine based circuit. Like it's like a spotlight. It can be diffused. It can be very concentrated. You know, everything that we're talking about here is really about being able to bring that focus of attention while learning the craft as tightly as possible and drop into that. And then the, the appropriate circuits will open up and we talk, you know, the whole flow circuitry will, will reveal itself. But if we're focusing a lot on how we're being perceived, it's really, it's really detrimental to that process. And this is the beauty of true creatives. When you see someone who really doesn't seem to care how other people are perceiving them, and they're really in craft, you just hop, you tend to hop on their train and, and, and go with them because it's, it's the, their lack of self-consciousness is, is contagious. Now mm. it's easier said than done. They all suffer from this. Many nights I go home repeating, like, should I said that, should I said it that way? So many times now that I actually know that's part of the process, it's my decompress, that's my brain doing self-assessment, which is also helpful. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people.